This week on Geek Crash Course, well, I asked for some help uh, picking this week's topic on Twitter, and one of the first to come in was one of my favorite comics characters, Captain Britain. Who is he? What's the big deal about him? Doesn't Marvel already have a Captain of America? The answers to these questions and more this week on Geek Crash Course West. There is a Captain America. It was our first episode. Just let's get out of the way. Between friends. Captain Britain is Brian Braddock, a physicist who fled an attack on his lab by a supervillain. Crashing his motorcycle during the chase, Brian awakens in the presence of Merlin and Merlin's daughter, Roma. Merlin gives Braddock a choice between the Sword of Might and the Amulet of Right. Braddock, not thinking himself much of a warrior, chooses the amulet, gaining superpowers and a cool costume. The costume gives Brian super strength, enhanced reflexes, and equips him with a magical staff that can extend into a pole for pole vaulting as well as project force fields. Now dipped in magic and clothed in science, Braddock becomes the superhero Captain Britain and defends the UK from various super foes. In the 80s, there was the first major reboot of the character in the Marvel UK line. Braddock attempts to defend a parallel world against an apocalyptic threat after being given a new costume that combines his staff and old suit into a singular garment. Brian attempts to defend this parallel world, but he loses, dying in the process. He's reborn into a new body at the hands of Merlin, revealed to be an advanced interdimensional scientist. Merlin makes Brian's powers intrinsically a part of him now, with the costume acting as a sort of buffer, channeling Brian's powers so that he doesn't hurt himself. Captain Britain's powers tend to shift and change over time, much like his costume, depending on the arrival of different writers and artists. You sort of have to get used to it. In the 80s revamp, he retains his super strength, agility, and protective force field, but also gains the power of flight. Braddock is sent back to the primary Marvel Universe, called Earth-616, to battle their version of the same forces that destroyed the alternate Earth, including insane reality-bending Minister of Parliament Jim Jaspers, and the super cyborg known only as the Fury. Captain Britain's adventures in this period, and really ever since, balance two approaches, contemporary stories and allegories to Britain at the time, and swashbuckling interdimensional stories that sometimes take a dark turn. The 80s era also introduces the concept of Otherworld, a nexus point between dimensions that is also host to the Captain Britain core, which includes interdimensional protectors like haunted hero Captain UK, the sinister Captain Breton, and Orwellian functionary Airstrip One, among many others. Merlin and Roma are also retconned into being a part of Otherworld as well. When designing the 80s era costume, artist Alan Davis looked at military uniforms, specifically of the type seen around Buckingham Palace. His depiction of Brian Braddock was based on Garth, a comic strip character seen in British newspaper The Daily Mirror. In his initial red-suited adventures, Captain Britain was joined by sprightly elf Jackdaw. Sadly, Jackdaw's main feature is that he's the first immediate casualty of the 80s revamp. During his interdimensional adventures, Brian also meets various versions of Saturnine, sometimes a caring leader, sometimes a mad dictator, sometimes Courtney Ross, Brian's ex-girlfriend. When he returns to contemporary Britain in his flag-like second costume, Brian is reunited with his sister Betsy, who has incredible psychic powers. When Brian goes rogue and refuses to work for the government, Betsy becomes a new Captain Britain, working with the interdimensional refugee, Captain UK, to protect people. Sadly, she's attacked by Brian's foe, Slaymaster, who blinds her. Brian, out of costume, smashes Slaymaster's head in with a boulder, so the dude kinda gets his. Anyway, Betsy begins to explore the limits of her powers, growing into a formidable telepath. In later comics, she and a ninja assassin called Lady Mandarin fuse, Betsy's mind and powers and Lady Mandarin's body and skill. Betsy, in this new form, takes on the hero name of Psylocke and can do all sorts of new, cool stuff with her powers, like generating psychic knives of pink and purple energy. In his contemporary adventures, Brian also meets Megan, a shape-shifting mutant who is initially a sort of charity case for the Braddocks. Eventually, Megan is transformed into a beautiful blonde, and she and Brian begin to fall for each other. It's later revealed that Megan is an empath, changing her shape to suit Brian, which kind of weirds them both out. She goes on a bit of a quest, finds herself, she and Brian get together properly, and after a lengthy courtship, they marry. During their courtship, Brian and Megan join a few expat X-Men, protecting the UK as Excalibur. The team has shifted over the years, but the initial members are Shadowcat, with her pet dragon Lockheed, Nightcrawler, and Phoenix, but not Jean Grey, instead it's Grey's daughter Rachel Summers, a time-shifted refugee of the days of future past. In more recent comics, Brian became king of Otherworld with Megan as his queen, so he gives Kelsey Lee the same choice he had, sword or amulet, and she chooses the sword, taking on the powers of might over right. This new Captain Britain is a fighter, though her powers weaken as she leaves the UK. She goes on her own path, taking on a new name, Lionheart, and leaves the Captain Britaining to Brian, but not trying to kill Brian under the influence of supervillain Albion. 
The new Excalibur run is kind of weird. Brian, separated from Megan by an interdimensional event, returns to the UK, takes up with the MI-13, a secret organization that deals with the wackier threats to the kingdom. His powers and costume get another reformatting, with Brian's abilities more directly connected to his emotional state as well as Britain itself, making him more of a symbol than just a Superman. I still prefer the 80s look, personally, I just think it looks a little bit better, and Marvel seems to agree with me, as he's been back in it across a few appearances in Uncanny X-Force, as a member of Secret Avengers with a handy black version, and in further adventures since then. Brian and Betsy have a brother, Jamie. Jamie's sort of a mess, a supervillain with reality-bending abilities. These are later connected to his otherworldian bloodline. Uh, and Jamie later reforms, but is killed almost immediately after mentioning it, so it doesn't really matter. When it comes to my recommendations about Captain Britain, here are the two Omnibuy I own. They're both gigantic phone book sized collections of comics. The first, uh, Birth of a Legend, is sort of the origin stuff of Captain Britain. Features some cool guest appearances by Spider-Man and Captain America, but I'd really recommend the 80s run. I'm gonna put that down, it's heavy. This is heavier. Uh, this is some Alan Moore stuff, some Jamie Delano stuff, amazing art by Alan Davis. It's my favorite run of the character, if I'm being perfectly honest, and it's, it's it comes highly recommended. It named the Marvel Universe Earth-616. It's kind of a big deal. If you're interested in the Excalibur and MI-13 runs of Captain Britain, I recommend them both. I'm more of a fan of the MI-13 side of things, written by Doctor Who writer Paul Cornell, but the Excalibur side of stuff is more for you if you're into the X-Men. For all of these, I... come on. I'm not honestly going to recommend that you buy Omnibuy. These are gigantic and incredibly expensive. Um, I would honestly say try and track them down in digital form. It'll be cheaper, a little bit easier, and... I mean, I grew up in the 20th century, so it was all paper comics, but let's be honest, it's the 21st century now. There's a parallel universe ultimate version of Brian Braddock too. This version of Captain Britain has sort of a basic power suit that gives him strength and flight, but because the ultimate universe is a world of bleak brutality and kind of infinite sadness, Brian gets cancer from the prototype suit dies and passes on the mantle in a different non-murder suit to his brother Jamie, who's neither a mutant nor crazy. Who's your favorite patriotic superhero? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more Geek Crash Course. Until next week, if you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, or our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time, we being both Diana and myself, because sometimes it's both of us, but sometimes it's like one of us, you get the idea by now, on Geek Crash Course. Thank you.